Hey guys, we are going to solve this rational inequality. If you're frustrated with this, I hope to help you. So the first thing, well, okay, let me first say, I'm going to give you some pretty specific steps to follow. And you might be like, okay, that's cool. I can do that, but I don't get why it worked. Well, at the end, I'm going to show you why it worked and it's really cool. So you should probably stick around for that. All right. The first thing I want is I want all of my numbers and variables and everything on one side and zero on the other side. So we're good here. Look at that. The next thing I'm going to do is factor if I need to. So my numerator can factor. If you need a factoring review, I'll link it in the corner, but I'm just going to tell you that this factors to X minus four times X plus three on the top. Then we're still X minus two on bottom and we are still less than zero. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set each of these equal to zero. So I'm going to have X minus four equals zero, X plus three equals zero, and X minus two equals zero. All right, add four to both sides, get X equals four. Subtract three from both sides, get X equals negative three, and add two to both sides to get X equals two. All right, now I am going to draw a number line I bet you just shouted for joy because number lines are your favorite thing. All right, I'm going to represent each of these on my number line. So I'm going to have negative three, two, and four. Your spacing doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get a general idea of what this looks like. I want to represent each of these points with a, a dot or a circle. And I need to know if it's an open circle or a closed circle. So right off, I know that two is going to be an open circle. And the reason I know that is because if I were to plug in two for X here, it would make my denominator zero, which is not okay in math. No zeros in denominators. So that's gonna be an open circle. To know if four and negative three are an open or closed circle, I look at this sign. Because it's less than and not less than or equal to, these are also going to be open circles. If this were less than or equal to, these two would be closed circles. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is called sign analysis. And it should be called be excited. That was a silly thing to say. I want to know in each of these regions to the left of negative three, between negative three and two, between two and four, and bigger than four, when I plug in a number in that area for X, is my output going to be positive or negative? All right. The reason it's called sign analysis is I am not too concerned right now about what my actual number answer is. I only care about if it is positive or negative. And let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to pick a number less than negative three. I could pick anything. Let's just pick negative 10. So when I plug in negative 10 for X, on top I get negative 10 minus four, which would give me a negative. Negative 10 plus three would also give me a negative on top. And on bottom, I would have negative 10 minus two, which is also negative. So on top I'd have negative times a negative, which is positive. On bottom I have that negative. Positive divided by a negative is negative. So this region to the left of negative three is negative. All right, between negative three and two, I need to pick a number. Let's just pick zero because that's nice and easy. Zero minus four is negative. Zero plus three is positive. And zero minus two is negative. So on top, I have a negative times a positive, which is negative. On bottom, I have a negative and a negative divided by a negative is positive. That tells me that this region between negative three and two is positive. Number between two and four, let's pick three. When I plug that in, three minus four would give me a negative. Three plus three, positive. And on bottom, three minus two would be a positive. Negative times a positive is negative and positive on bottom. Negative divided by a positive is negative. Between two and four is negative. And then numbers bigger than four, let's just pick 10. You could pick 100 if you wanted, go for it. 
10 minus 4 would give me positive. 10 plus 3 positive over 10 minus 2 is positive. All those positives would end up being positive. All right, from here, we figured out these negatives and positives. Now what? Well, we're going to go back and look at this problem. Remember, we wanted to know where this is less than zero. Well, what kind of numbers are less than zero? Negative numbers. And we already figured out where our negative numbers are. Again, if you're like, why is this working? This is weird. Stick around. It's going to make sense. So I figured out that from negative three, no, the number's less than negative three, I should say, when I plug those in for X, my output is going to be a negative number. Same for between two and four. So any number I pick that is less than negative three, I plug it in for X and it will make this statement true. I will get a number that is less than zero over here. Same if I pick a number between two and four for X, I will get a number that is less than zero. So this number line represents my answer, but your teacher probably wants it, your answer written either as an inequality or in interval notation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we want to show an, an inequality that represents both of these. So I would say X is less than negative three for this section, not equal to because it's an open circle. Or X can also be greater than two and less than four, right? Because it can't just be greater than two because it can't be these numbers over here. It needs to be greater than two and less than four. So I can write it like that, or I can also write it with just one X like this. Two is less than X is less than four. So that is my answer written in inequality form. Pick a number that fits this criteria and it'll make this statement true. If I wanted to write it in interval notation, we'd say pick a number from negative infinity to negative three. Negative infinity always gets a parenthesis. Negative three gets a parenthesis because of the open circle. If that were a closed circle, I would use a bracket. So I can pick a number from negative infinity to three, or I'm going to use the U for union, meaning that's together with this guy, which in interval notation, we would represent as parenthesis two to four. Both of those get parentheses again because of the open circles. So those two answers are the same. They're the same answer, just in different forms, depending on what your teacher wants. All right, now is my favorite part, guys. I get to show you why we did this. Why did we set these equal to zero? Why did we do this sign analysis stuff? All right, I'm going to show you. So if, pretend for a second, don't run and hide when I say the word graph. Pretend for a second that you were being asked to graph this problem. X squared minus X minus 12 over X minus 2. If I were being asked to graph that, now, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about how to graph this because I do have a video I will link in the corner where I graph this exact problem. But if I were being asked to graph this, I would first figure out where my vertical asymptotes are by setting the denominator equal to zero. And I would figure out that I have a vertical asymptote at two. There is my vertical asymptote. The next thing I would do would be to look at my degrees and I figure I don't have a horizontal asymptote, but I do has a, have a slant asymptote at X plus one, which would look something like this. Then applying what, oh no, not yet. Then I find my X intercept, which is at negative three and four. So there are my two X intercepts at negative three and four. Then applying what I know about functions and asymptotes and things, I would figure out that this graph looks something like this. There we go. Okay. You're like, great. Why do I care? <laughs> Let me tell you why you care. So Remember, my original question was, where is this less than zero? 
Well, we graphed it. So we can see visually where it is less than zero. It is less than zero from negative infinity to negative three. Not including negative three because that's where it actually is zero. And then it's also, that's not the only place it's less than zero, it's also less than zero from two to four. Not including two because of the asymptote and not including four because that's where it actually is zero. Guys, is that so cool? We basically, when we did this, what we were actually doing when we set everything equal to zero, we were actually finding our x-intercepts and our asymptote. That's what we were doing when we set those equal to zero. And then this sign analysis business that we did, that was just figuring out which direction the graph went in each of these regions. Guys, I think that's so cool. If you don't, that's okay, but I'm still very excited about it. Okay, I hope this made sense. I hope if you're working on homework, you can get it done. I will link a playlist with some more examples if you just like listening to my voice or if you need some more help with some more problems. Okay, thanks. Bye.